Welcome, friends, to another edition of Tiffin Box TV. I'm your host, Seishu, and I'm speaking with my friend, Brian Caparici. You, you know, Brian is a, a photographer. Uh, he's an entrepreneur. Uh, he's a speaker. He, he teaches people all the time. Uh, he speaks at conferences all the time. Uh, he is a really well-known guy, uh, thanks to his wonderful blog called Sprouting Photographer. If you haven't seen Sprouting Photographer or read Sprouting Photographer, please go and check it out. But come back to Tiffin Box, okay? Come back to <laughs> Tiffin Box as well. Uh, Brian is is going to be speaking and actually leading a webinar, thanks to Shoot.Edit, uh, on December 16th around the word busy. You know, really about talking about how we get too busy for ourselves, for our own good. And I wanted to do, have him on my my show here, our show here, to talk about uh, what is this that we are doing for uh, to ourselves, really, Brian, as photographers, that we find ourselves busy all the time, and that seems to be like the greatest thing ever. And you're saying, hell no, right? Oh, Seishu. Well, first of all, thank you for having me uh, back on the show. I always love coming on and chatting with you. Um, th the thing around this topic of busy that I think we've almost accepted the idea and the notion of being busy as a society. Doesn't it seem that way where you see someone that you haven't seen in a while? I, you know, I recently talked to a friend that he's living about, you know, four hours away from me and I haven't seen him in a while. And he's like, Oh, Hey Brian, how's business? Are you busy? And it's almost like we use the idea of being busy as, as a means of justification or we almost wear it as a badge of honor to say like, yes, I am important because I am busy busy and, and and we use it as an excuse you know like we're not there for those that are most important to us I, I'm just as bad at this as anyone in fact right now I'm going through a bit of a transformation to abandon the idea of being busy because oftentimes I'll be talking with my wife and she'll say oh are you gonna be home for supper and I say oh you know we're really busy at the office and it's busy 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 why do we use busy why do we glorify it why do we put it up on a pedestal it should not be that way we are not measured by our level of busyness and success does not equal busy. So my idea behind the webinar here and behind what I want to really help uh, inspire photographers to understand is that we don't have to live a lifestyle that is glorifying busy. We don't have to be busy. We can have a nice balanced lifestyle. We can have happiness. We can have success without always feeling like we're busy, overworked, overrun, and not able to breathe. Well, let me ask you this, though. Do most people equate busy to being productive? Is that the problem? That's that's one of the biggest problems in all that. And I actually call that, um, within this whole concept of busy, I've identified what I call the five lies, which are lies that many people tell themselves that justify the idea of being busy. And the one that you just identified is what I call the lie of importance. And it's that we we take this thing that we think is so important, like, oh, you know, I've, I've got to check Facebook or I've got to do this. And we do these things. Uh, being productive does not necessarily mean working hard. Do you know what I mean? In, in the mm -hmm. sense that if I were to ask most photographers and say, what did you do today? And they say, oh, I was just so busy. I worked so hard today. If I were to actually look at a graph monitoring every five minutes of what you did during the day, I bet if you were objective, you could probably take away three quarters of that and still feel as if you had just gotten as much done. But we often find ourselves doing what I call busy work, where it's work that makes us feel like we're doing work, but we're not actually doing anything productive or useful. Ah, well, leading right into the webinar, you're going to be talking about how to get away from this idea of being busy, right? Uh, yes. You're going to give us some tips on running away from this idea of busy. Give us at least one that sort of might spark a, a little bit more of a dialogue totally. about this. For sure. So I think one of the biggest things in the whole conversation around busy is that we need to be comfortable and we need to be okay getting our own mind out of that that space. Because I can give tactics, I can give ideas, I can give apps, I can give methods to be uh, more useful with your time and spend your time in a way that's not being busy. But unless we can get ourselves to a place mentally where we're feeling okay to do that and you know we accept that uh, yes, I have a problem. And, you know, that's like any transformation that we go through, whether it's weight loss, whether it's going through alcoholism or a drug addiction or anything, any big transformation in our life, we have to first accept that there's a problem. And so I think that, uh, you know, 
getting on board with the idea that um, wh why do we feel busy and how can we get ourselves out of that mind space of feeling like we need to feel busy? Um, one of the ideas, and this is, this is part of a tactic because you have to get yourself there first mentally, but one of the ideas is this thing that we tell ourselves that I call the live temporary, which is when we say, oh, you know, I'm, I'm working really hard right now and, and it's going to be over soon and once I'm done this, once I reach X, once I reach whatever, I'm going to not be busy anymore. And that's bullshit, frankly. The whole idea. I, I, don't, know you, I, can, I right. don't even know if I can swear on your, on your show. No, you can. You can. <laughs> well, well, here's the thing. I, th I think you, you, you're right. Absolutely, 100%. I think we all do that. Yeah. You know, we all say, oh, yeah, next week when I, I will have nothing on my calendar, and then suddenly you feel that calendar just completely fill up. It never comes. Uh, yeah. How does that, I mean, what do we do? What do we do into ourselves? Yeah. So, and that's the thing is, is I, I, I want to, to say is that um, stop looking at this as a race. Stop looking, uh, you know, often when we say like, oh, I'm going to keep working until X and whatever X is, it's like we define the finish line and we sprint thinking that the finish line is right around the corner when in reality the finish line is not around the corner because we keep moving the damn finish line. So that's the problem is that when we continually try to define ourselves and work hard to a place that we keep moving, you're going to always feel like you're being busy. So my suggestion is to stop looking at life, stop looking at business as a race. It's not a race. Uh, it's not a sprint anyways. Look at it as a marathon and pace yourself and say, you know what, I'm not going to get everything I need to get done this week and that's okay. I'm not going to get everything I need to get done today, and that's okay. We need to become okay with and come to peace with the idea that uh, life is about pacing things out and don't feel like you're constantly sprinting to the finish line. Let me, let me throw you a curveball. Yeah. Okay. Uh, that's great. That's, I, lo I love the concept and the theory behind that, but let's say you have goals. You have financial yep. goals, mm -hmm. and that finance, those financial goals require you to – let's say shoot, I don't know, 15 portrait sessions a week, right? You are you're sort of laser focused and want to get those 15 f uh, portrait sessions a week done, right? What are you going to do to to get to that goal but not run yourself ragged and 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 be busy all the time? I mean, really there's a there's a bit of a, a balancing act, yes. isn't there? Let me let me uh, answer your question with a question, and let me say, uh, when was the last time you went on vacation? Can you can you think of the last time you went on vacation? Sure. Okay. Um, what day did you leave? What day of the week did you leave? I left. We left on a Saturday. On a Saturday, I'm willing to bet with 99% certainty that that Thursday and Friday before you left for vacation, you got more done in those two days than you did the two weeks that, that were before that. Am I right? That's true. Okay. <laughs> Everyone goes through that. Uh, it's called, I'm, I'm totally drawing a blank right now of, of the theory that it's called Parkinson's Law. And basically it says that um, tasks will expand to the time that you give them. Meaning that if you have a deadline that you have self-imposed or that is imposed by something else, such as a vacation, you will get more done in the time that you have between now and that deadline than you will if you just say, oh, I'm just going to keep working on this wedding until it's done. So case in point, a great example of this is if you say my deadline, my timelines for editing a wedding in Lightroom is two hours. I promise you, if it's reasonable, you'll get it done in two hours. Whereas if you don't give yourself a deadline, that same task doing the same quality of work might take you four hours, might take you five hours. So by imposing these kinds of deadlines and by actually making ourselves accountable to ourselves, then we're more likely to actually achieve things in much lower amounts of time. So, so your recommendation is like, uh, so we have a week, which is five working days. Yep. You're, you're suggesting uh, really saying, hey, to ourselves, let's do this in three days or four days instead versus five days. Is that what yep. you're saying? So that you, have, you have an extra day to just sort of Totally. Take it easy. There's been some phenomenal studies, and I don't have the, the, the who did the research on them to quote them here uh, right now, but there's been some phenomenal studies that say um, they've taken focus groups and said, okay, here's a focus group that works 40 hours a week, five days a week, nine to five with you know a lunch break. And they would take one focus group and say, you've still got the same 40 hours of work to do. Here's the tasks that we need you to do in that time. They took another part of the focus group and said, you no longer have 40 hours. You don't have five days anymore. You don't have four days. And they gave him the exact same amount of work to do and both groups get the work done. And yet one takes one day less. 
The same principle could be applied to say, well, hey, if you work nine to five currently, I'm willing to bet that after a couple of weeks of adjustment, if you adjust your schedule to say you only work from nine until three every day, I'll bet you'll still get the same amount of work done. So the idea in all of this is to uh, get yourself okay with the idea that you have to have deadlines. You have to have some self-imposed timelines and some things to, to, to you know, have, have your entire business, your entire work week structured around. Otherwise, it's just going to happen when it happens. Uh, another great example, I use this in my own business. I say, I must have the entire, I'm a wedding photographer, I must have an entire wedding wrapped up, mailed out, proofed out, album designed, everything done by the time the next wedding comes, which for me in the summertime is every single weekend. That's right. So by me imposing that, I don't know how I get it done, but I get the entire wedding done, album designed, proofs mailed out, prints made, everything within the week that I have between this wedding and the next wedding. Now, if I didn't do that, and I have had this happen in the past before I impose these deadlines, gosh, my fall would just get crazy because I had like my weddings would just pile up and pile up and pile up and pile up. And the logical side of me says, well, how does that happen? Because I just got everything done in less than five days. How does it happen that all of a sudden it could spell it into a few months? And it's because you didn't have any self-imposed deadlines on them. Awesome. Well, it's as simple as that then, I guess. It literally is. And it seems so simplistic. And it almost just seems like, what do you mean? Setting deadlines, that's going to be enough? I promise you, I challenge anyone watching to, to go and impose a deadline on something. And I promise you, your brain will find a way to make it work. And it will work and you'll get it done in the time you give yourself within reason. I mean, I'm not saying give yourself a five minute deadline to edit an entire wedding. It's not going to happen, right? But if you give yourself a deadline and you focus on it and you get yourself in the zone and you don't get distracted, ah, that's oh a, my that's... gosh, don't, don't even get me into the whole thing about distractions. I mean, if we could just focus on whatever it is that is in front of us, right. gosh, we could get so much more done. In fact, the fifth lie that I like to identify with is called the lie of multitasking. Human beings are physically incapable of multitasking. I don't care who tells you what, whatever they say, multitasking, all these things, it's it's literally physically impossible. Our brain is only capable of focusing on one thing at any one point in time. And whenever you think you might be multitasking, what you're actually doing is taking your attention span and splitting back and forth and rapidly jumping between tasks. So you're never actually multitasking, you're just splitting your attention. That's not an effective way to work. Oh, wow. And it's these kinds of things that one can learn from you on December 16th, I imagine, right? Yes, exactly. Um, so December 16th is when you're going to be uh, doing a webinar for Shoot.Edit. Uh, the information will be on their site very soon. Uh, but you're going to be talking about essentially the idea of becoming more efficient uh, yes. in a way. Yes. Uh, and to that end, I, one has to mention your new uh, tool for photographers called Sprout studio. Uh, and this is something that uh, I've been very uh, grateful to receive from you as, as, as a way of, uh, of checking it out and reviewing it. But I want you to talk to us a little bit about why you decided this is really the best time for photographers to get this tool. Yeah, totally. Thank you. And, and thanks for giving me a chance to chat about it. Oh, sure. Yeah. Um, the idea behind Sprout Studio is that uh, to run a successful photography business, um, Perhaps one at, at one point in time, it was the case that you could just be a great photographer and all the business would come into you and you'd be able to run a great studio. Um, in today's marketplace, it's just simply not the case. In order to be a successful photographer and to be sustainable, uh, you need to have good systems. You have to have good business acumen. You also have to be a great photographer. But you need to make sure that your client experience is refined, that your communications are consistent, and that you're organized and on top of the ball. Because if you're not, you're just going to fall apart and you're not going to be able to have long-term success. And that's what I want to enable photographers to do. Uh, for me and all my teachings and also everything I do with Sprout Studio, um, I really truly believe that there's nothing better than being able to be an entrepreneur and to make a living doing what you love. And so Sprout Studio basically provides that framework. It gives uh, all the tools that a photographer needs to do in one place, under one roof, in a way that's completely integrated with each other. Currently, wow. um, I mean, it's it's a, a huge project. Obviously, Seisha, you and I uh, know that. We've, yeah. we've been talking about it for a couple of years, and we've been in development of Spirit Studio for two years now. Yeah. And we're so excited that we just finally launched on November 4th. The public is in there. Uh, the price is $49 a month. And let me tell you what that includes. It includes 
studio management software, which basically is you know managing all of your clients, booking people, taking in uh, money from your client, well, taking money that sounds bad, collecting payments from your clients, uh, having questionnaires, doing workflows, automated emails, all these kinds of things that would make the running and the communication aspect of your with your clients successful. So that's like the studio management component. The next component uh, that's included is what's called online galleries or proofing galleries where you can upload your images, you can showcase them to your clients, they can order prints, they can do favorites, they can download some images if you've enabled that. You can offer digital delivery of all of your wedding images, of a portrait session, whatever it is, uh, in the way that you want to be delivering the images, um, all in one nice, concise package. Now, that both those pieces aren't revolutionary in and of themselves. Um, the third component that is really important is album proofing. So after you've designed an album for a client, to get feedback on that album, to get changes, to see if they want to go ahead and have that printed or not, we offer that as well within Sprout Studio. Again, those are three components, and then we've got more that I could talk about, or perhaps you can go learn about it over on our website. But those three components, they issue individually. Yep are not necessarily revolutionary because they all currently exist in the marketplace. And I'm not naive enough to think that they don't exist. There's some wonderful solutions that do each of those pieces. Where the problem is, is that currently, if you want to do any one of those, you've got to go log in to a separate website. You have to go to your album proofing software. You have to go to your, to your uh, online proofing software. You have to go to your studio management software. Okay, slightly inconvenient. Where is it even more inconvenient? When your client gets an email from you from one system and then they go and interact with an album proof and then they get an email from a different system and have to go and interact with your, uh, your gallery and then a different system where they go and make their payment and then a different system where they go and do their questionnaires. It's very complicated for our clients and the customer experience is very inconsistent. So that's where with Sprout Studio, we bring all of these pieces under one roof, do it all in the same place, and also we focus heavily on the customer experience being very streamlined. So your clients have everything in one place, it's consistent, and then you can manage it all in one place. Oh, wow. Sounds, sounds like the, uh, the, you know, essentially uh, what, what photographers really are aching for yes. in a way, uh, yeah. but not able to really get anywhere else. So uh, not to really pitch Sprout Studio real hard on this, but <laughs> the fact is your, yours is the only solution that actually does everything it all is, under yes. one roof, right? It, it's it's the only, the first, all in one. Yeah. We, we call it a business success software because it doesn't just do studio management. It doesn't just do one thing. It's built as a platform and a framework for you to do everything you need to do to run a successful business. And that's why we call it the all in one business success software. Now, I've asked you this before. Is this really meant only for wedding photographers? You talk about albums and things like that. Yeah, no, definitely are, are, not. Are no. wedding photographers uh, sort of the exclusive users no. of this platform? No, and, and good question. Thanks for clarifying. So uh, wedding photographers, obviously, there's a huge benefit there because a lot of it was built around the framework of the wedding and portrait photographer. So wedding photographers can benefit hugely from it. Portrait photographers can benefit hugely from it. One of the other components I didn't mention, and I'll just quickly just explain it super quickly, is called sales gallery. And it's the idea of marrying uh, the proven in-studio sales process that photographers are used to doing to sell wall art and marrying that with the convenience of an online gallery. So Sales Gallery is the first of its kind to do this that basically takes the convenience and takes the proven sales process and puts them together in one place. So portrait photographers are loving that feature in and of itself. And again, it's all integrated into the same software. So wedding photographers can benefit from it. Portrait photographers can benefit from it. We have a lot of newborn photographers that are using it and loving it. So uh, there's not really any, as long as you're, you know, it's it was definitely geared towards the consumer uh, serving photography businesses. So while there's use cases to use it as a commercial photographer, definitely the main benefit is for, you know, if you're a portrait photographer or a wedding photographer, a newborn photographer, a boudoir photographer, those kinds of photographers are the ones that will benefit the most out of it. Awesome. Uh, I know you. The, the focus for you for Sprout Studio has been to make it easier for your clients, for clients to have a wonderful experience yep. uh, that's seamless and things like that. Uh, but to bring our conversation back to busyness and, uh, and, and 
just being overloaded with work. Uh, I'm assuming Sprout Studio is also really geared towards making the lives of photographers really efficient and simple and Absolutely. elegant, right? Yeah, I mean, that was the whole initial idea behind why I decided to start Sprout Studio was because I was finding it so overwhelming to have to log into here to do this and log into here to do this. And just the sheer idea that if I photograph Mary and Jay's wedding before I was using Sprout Studio, I would have to go into my studio management software and enter all of Mary and Jay's stuff and manage them over there. And then when I wanted to do their gallery, I had to go into their gallery software and then enter Ma Jay and Mary and enter all their data there and do all their stuff there. And then same thing with their album proof and same thing with their questionnaires. And it was, it was, I was entering the same thing four or five times. I've done I was, I wasn't ever able to look at anything in one place. So it's like, oh, did they approve the album? Oh, I don't know. Let me go and log out and log back in somewhere else. So it was complicated. It was, it was wasting my time doing all of this. So the whole idea behind it initially was to make photographers' lives easier and to give them one place to manage everything because now you go in do your thing, and then get out. We want to enable photographers to get back to being able to do what they love, which is photography, and stop with all the minutia of running the business and managing the business, and Sprout Studio helps with that. Oh, one last question. Um, yep. Given that Sprout Studio is doing so much, or can do so much, yep. um, does this take away the idea of outsourcing things that one shouldn't be doing? No, I'm in fact quite the opposite. To be honest, um, I actually still hugely advocate for outsourcing. In fact, one of the one of the biggest questions that we've been asked, and I'll address it very candidly here, is uh, photographers are asking if we do bookkeeping mm -hmm. within Sprout Studio. Right. And my answer is no. We don't currently do bookkeeping. Now, that's not to say that at some point we won't do bookkeeping. But my opinion is that if you're a photographer and you want to be truly doing more of what you love, which is photography, why do you want to be spending your time doing bookkeeping? You know, for for what our time is worth and for what you could have a bookkeeper do for you in your business, our time is just not best spent there. Um, it just it, it literally doesn't make sense. I'll give you a quick example. In my business, I don't touch my bookkeeping stuff. I have a bookkeeper that comes in for $200 a month. And basically, all I have to do is every receipt, every invoice, every payment I ever make, I literally just pile in a folder beside my desk. And once a month, he comes in and picks it up. A week later, he comes back and he runs through an entire profit loss statement with me, all of my statements. He basically gives me advice. He's a managerial bookkeeper and he says, here's how I think you can run a better business. Here's where your costs were too high. Here's where your income was high. Here's what we should do with payroll. Here's my suggestion for taxes. He gives me advice. He saves me more money than he costs me. That aside, I don't have to touch my bookkeeping. I literally just take a printout and put it in a folder and say, here you go. And my time isn't best spent doing that because that, that whole process of inputting into QuickBooks and reporting and, and uh, doing reconciliations on bank accounts, that would probably take me you know, 15 hours, 20 hours a month. Well, to be honest, for $200 to save me 20 hours plus give me a lot more advice and save me more money than I could save myself, that's totally worth my time. And so my suggestion to photographers is I know photographers have a hard time letting go of things. It's why photographers sometimes have a hard time letting go of their retouching or their editing or their right. culling or their album design. Bookkeeping is the same thing. And so I advocate heavily for still outsourcing on the things that your time is not best used to used doing. But Sprout Studio automates so much of it that it helps you even more so in the things that you are doing so you can just get away from being behind your computer and get back to being behind your camera. Awesome. Uh, your webinar with shoot.edit is on December 16th. Uh, we don't have a time just yet, but we will post it uh, when this uh, interview goes live. Uh, thanks, Brian. I really appreciate what you're doing for the industry. And, uh, you know, really, it's always a pleasure to speak with you about your your projects. I know you're you're thinking a mile a minute, <laughs> <laughs> you know, uh, bringing bringing new things out to to help us all do better at uh, at being at better at being business photographers. Yeah, really. everything you know, and that's that's right. ultimately you know, Seishu, right. thank you again for having me on, and I just want to encourage photographers watching and listening to say like, hey, you can make the a go at this. You can make a great living being a photographer. It's a wonderful way to live your life, and again, make a living doing what you love. You can do it. You just have to work smart at it. Thank you. That was great advice again. Great. Mm -hmm.